Alright, should be making a video. An mendum video. Um, I guess that's the record symbol. Anyway, um, we'll hope. Uh, Hoffa Bay. This is, so, this is an old argument. It's been done over and over. Um, clearly people who wish to be subjectivists and say that uh, the real source of their knowledge is some impulse they have from their biology and their biology is the definer of uh, real value. Um, I would argue that most of those impulses are um, completely overcomable by our intelligence, uh, knowledge of the better purpose so we will endure some pain to cure our diseases. We will not scratch an itch to try to prevent uh, opening a wound. Um, you know, different things that we'll try to do to suppress impulses because we know there's a better purpose uh, to be accomplished and that better purpose doesn't have any immediate gratification. We don't get any immediate comfort, um, but we know that in the long run we'll win. So I have often argued uh, philosophically that our obligation, say if you care about civilization or people, um, it's sort of the um, you know ounce of prevention worth a pound of cure, worth a ton of band-aids. Same kind of thing goes for the idea of my personal welfare versus the welfare of seven billion people versus the welfare of seven trillion people that would be the future you know the future is really big present is small me personally tiny um, kind of argument and that logically if I see some purpose as I do in preventing harm to myself obviously I, I know that bad sensations are bad I'm not preventing them because I'm a robot uh, because I'm a zombie going brains brains I must have brains I'm preventing the harm because I know it's unpleasant. Um, I don't smash my hand with a hammer. Uh, I don't allow certain accidents to happen because I know they'll be very unpleasant and uncomfortable. So it's purely logical that I prevent harm to myself. It would be just as logical to prevent harm from somebody else happening to somebody else because they're going to experience exactly the same kind of harm. Uh, qualitatively exactly uh, by any measure that matters they're same so Hathaday concedes the sameness yet he doesn't see the logic in the argument that if you take care of yourself because you see reason to do so logical reason that same logical reason applies to all the other sentient things that you could be made aware of there is just as much imperative just as much reason, logic, saying stop the pain as there is for you to stop your pain. And the only difference is, is that you feel your pain, so you feel your failure. Your failure to prevent, you will experience your failure. And that's the only difference. And clearly it's a huge difference um, for corrupt illogical organisms, but to a logical thinking machine, an objective observer, there's an obvious duplicity and hypocrisy. There's, it's just obvious from an objective point of view that if all we're doing is behaving in our own self-interest, we're missing the um, rational boat, the logical boat. Um, we're, um, you know, we're whatever taking care of the <laughs> taking care of not hitting fish you know you're steering the Titanic around the fish and plowing into the iceberg you're you're missing the volume of the efficiency to be gained for a tiny efficiency that's personal and it's a corruption we all have we're all vulnerable as hell to it I will admit as I often have I am a selfish cunt it's just a fact, um, and uh, but it should be one we all admit. It should be one we all concede that we're acting way outside the boundaries of logical. We're not getting anywhere close to um, uh, Spockian discipline um, because we are so pulled 
uh, you know, by this fact that we personally experience any failure that involves our personal life. And we don't personally experience our failure to rescue, our failure to put out the fires, the failure to save somebody else, to spare somebody else with the same intelligence we apply to sparing ourselves. And so I've just pointed out that if you're going to have any respect for your intelligence, your intelligence, okay, should be acting rationally and recognizing that you are a small portion of the value at risk. You're just one of the little diamonds. There's a big sea of diamonds to be preserved. Um, sameness is important. Uh, practical sameness. Pragmatic sameness. And if you're going to find logical reason to treat yourself to the benefits of feeling less pain and having fewer accidents and making fewer mistakes that will cost you suffering. The same obligation exists for all the other preciouses. They're all preciouses, like in the rings, you know. They're all precious. <clears throat> they all need to be protected just as much as you do. Just as much. They need to be comfortable just as much as you do. The imperative, logical imperative, the rational imperative that there be no unnecessary suffering exists everywhere. <laughs> and it's not just exclusive to you. And so the fact that he can't understand that the only reason that it is a purely rational decision he makes to preserve himself, to protect himself, to comfort himself, and that the obligation that he sees the rational obligation to protect himself, the fact that he does treat himself, he does, he does recognize the difference between pain and pleasure, and he does try to maximize the pleasure and minimize the pain, um, that same equation has to be applied rationally to everything else. The same rule applies. There's no changed rule. And all you have to do is step out of yourself and pretend you're watching somebody else do what you do and you can recognize, ah, they're missing it. <laughs> they're, they're not recognizing that the little value they're worried about is a tiny percentage of the value. Again, if we saw rats behaving like that, we would say, oh, that rat's being foolish, stupid. Um, he's, he's, he's compromising somebody else's welfare to preserve his own welfare. He's hurting the other rats. So he's doing damage. Uh, you know, in total, he's, he's causing more harm than he's preventing because he's obsessed about his own welfare instead of being obsessed about welfare, period. So it's just not that technical an argument. I, I don't think there, is, there isn't any logical way to escape it if you're going to apply reasoning to understanding what you're doing when you're experiencing. So the only way you can do it is to be a nihilist, to deny even your own, even the fact of your own welfare mattering, and just pretending that I couldn't help being selfish. Uh, it's programmed. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference. I got an itch and I had to scratch it. Uh, you know, I got thirsty so I drank a bottle of vodka. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, just stupid, you know, you're, all you're doing is making excuses. Because clearly you do know the difference between feeling good and feeling bad. You know one is better than the other. And you're just pretending they don't and pretending the fact that you're behaving just like they do make a difference, just like there is a cavern of difference between a nail in your eye and a cupcake. You're personally acting as if there's a difference. And yet you're pretending that you're only doing that because you're programmed and you're too stupid to figure out the difference. No, you know the difference and you know exactly why. Uh, comfort's better than discomfort. You know it is a fact, okay? And you're behaving knowing it's a fact. And so it's just a lie, a nihilist lie to evade responsibilities, evade obligations, period. So all this bullshit to veil this as some kind of philosophy, it's, it's just escapism. So... 
in the middle of the other day, mentioned that he, that, well, he claimed I was a nihilist. And he mentioned that I couldn't understand. And I try my best to paraphrase him. I could. Yeah, well, your paraphrases always do, frankly, suck, but whatever. I couldn't understand how others are just the same as me. And that that act places a responsibility on me. So again, we've already been over all this. So this, again, this is just a, like I said, old wounds. I, you know, this is yeah, just whatever you want to call it. But I mean, we've already been over the subject. It's not that complicated. Again, it's it's kind of obvious from if you just do a little bit of objectifying, a little tiny bit of stepping back. And if you see people doing it based on, well, my race is better than their race or my family is better than their family. You know those are all nonsense notions. You know that every single parent thinks their kids are special. Is that thought reasonable? <laughs> Realistically, can every one of them be right that their kids are special and deserve special treatment? No, of course that can't be right. So you know that the, 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 the lo logical fallacy is sitting right out there, this meanness fallacy of me good, them bad. That is a fallacy, okay, until you prove that there's something about you that makes you special and makes you more deserving you can't just assume it because if everybody assumes it that's irrational it's not possible so um and but the truth is is that there isn't a dime's worth of difference in truth and so if my brain is knows that pain is bad and comfort is good the same truth applies broken leg is broken leg me having a broken leg doesn't make it more of a tragedy than if somebody else has the broken leg. I can understand that's a fact. Is there any way to undo that as a fact? Is there some idiot on this planet who actually thinks their broken leg is special and somebody else's broken leg doesn't mean anything? That's retarded. To safeguard the suffering. I'm just saying as a logical imperative, suffering is bad is what your brain is drawing the conclusion and you've decided that no it's my suffering is bad the my part is irrelevant to the suffering it doesn't mean anything that we can logically understand so we know that the suffering is the thing being identified as bad and applying me to it just like applying my kids to the notion of kids is being illogical the preciousness of the kid is a property the child has. Children have the property of being worthy of care. All right? Meanness, mine, possession, doesn't change any of it. Doesn't change a single property the child has. The child has earned care and consideration because we understand they are vulnerable, because they can make more mistakes than us, and they can do stupid things and all that crap. We know, can know that, and every child is entitled to that protection, and every child child can be seen, you know, except if it's profoundly retarded, then you know you, you just give it some crayons and forget about it. But we know that all the rest of them have potential, okay? And they can be president of the United States, they can be all kinds of great things, you know, when that used to be a great thing to be, obviously, but, you know, not anymore, because then you're just lying scum. But anyway some admirable accomplishment. They can be inventors and they can be people that can, are capable of doing something productive with their life. I, again, nobody raises children to be anything but scum, but I'm just saying, presumably, the idea is to preserve the child's potential, preserve its arms and legs, preserve its intellectual capacity. Don't allow it to spiral into drugs and spiral into graffiti or to spiral into useless crap. Um, Every one of them is entitled to that pr protection, not just yours. <laughs> you know, the quality of need is in the kid. It isn't in the, it's mine. That's just a lie to think that has any value or meaning. It has none, logically. And again, it's just a logical argument. I'm not telling you, you can't be a nepotist. I'm not saying you can't be a racist. I'm not saying you can't be any of those things. You can have those feelings, but just recognize that, okay, I acknowledge I have some really stupid, um, impulsive, knee-jerky reactions that don't have anything to do with the truth. They just have to do with my personal psychology. 
and just recognize that, yeah, it'd be nice if I wasn't controlled by that, uh, that I didn't get the personal itch and scratch it. No, I have safeguard others suffering in, in my own ways as I see it. <clears throat> yeah, and again, my whole point is, is as you see it is nonsense. So I'm just pointing out that the as you see it part has no logical consistency. You do treat yourself better than you treat others, period. And I'm saying there's no rational reason for your intellect to think that's productive. It should be economizing its motion. See, sometimes to protect ourselves requires a whole bunch of expense and maintenance, high maintenance, where we could feed the world with what we throw away. <laughs> okay, we could, uh, somebody else, 10 people, I could give something I have to 10 people and they could make so much more use out of it than I do. I squander its value. I put it on a shelf somewhere and it does nothing where they could gain huge utility out of it and comfort. I have blankets on my uh, shelf. Those blankets could be warming some homeless person at night. They're being wasted on my shelf because I'm, uh, I'm insecure. I might someday need them. Maybe, possibly, maybe, like probably zero likelihood, but <laughs> the waste is still there. So I'm just saying clearly if your brain gave a shit about the reality instead of being controlled by its subjective me, me, me bullshit, it would logically know, no, you expend the energy in the most efficient way possible. You make as many cupcakes as possible and as few nails in the eye as possible. Not from you personally, not the threat to you personally, but the threat to the masses as a whole. It's just a fact. It's the law of efficiency. You're irrational. You want to pretend that your feelings and your emotions are rational? Go ahead and pretend it. But I'm just going to call it what it is. Pretending. Uh, to some extent. But that, that extent isn't the same perhaps as amendments and certainly doesn't extend in the same way to all sentient beings. Right. By no rational argument. I mean, it's not like you're making some rational argument. You're just saying, I don't feel any connection. Therefore, I don't have any obligation. And again, it's just what you feel is irrelevant um, in terms of you using your feelings to define what the thing is. The thing has properties, and its properties are what defines what it's entitled to or what it deserves. And as long as it has the properties, um, as long as the, the, like the sentient piglet or something, it has more capacity to feel it's more aware its eyes are more capable of having a, a negative nail experience than the stupid human fetus that people get hysterical about a lot more capacity and it's just a fact a logical fact but I've repeatedly asked what you we... haven't repeatedly asked anything again we had this whole conversation this is, this is 1 plus 1 and 2 plus 2. This isn't complicated at all. You're a duplicitous hypocrite. The end. You don't have any logical justification for saying, I can treat same things differently. You can't do that. That's illogical. You can't say there's an imperative for me to treat this thing some way and that's the same imperative doesn't apply to the other things that are the same. If they're the same, it has a consequence. And you're just denying the consequence that it's entitled to exactly the treatment you're going to give yourself. So the day you don't give a shit about your welfare is the day you cannot give a shit about everybody else's welfare. But until then, you're stuck being a duplicitous hypocrite defending selfish country. Is it that sameness places this responsibility on me? It places a logical, I've said it four million times, it places a logical obligation. If your logic is going to be consistent, it, it, the obligation exists, period. All right, you just can't play this game that it's my child, therefore that's an entitlement. Somehow, my -ness 
means it's important. No, logically, that can't be used as a property that could possibly matter to anybody logical or rational or reasonable. Minus does not make it feel more. Minus does not make it have greater potential in the world. Minus does not give it any value component at all except your own emotional neuroses. Your emotional neuroses is not something your child has. You can't give it that property. I'm neurotically attached to it, therefore, it has now new and enhanced properties. No, it has the same properties that all the other kids have. All right, and you're the one distorting the reality. You're the one perverting the view. There is no perversion of its properties. There's a perversion of your perspective. Fuck. Two plus two. I mean, one plus one is brain, 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 brain. Feel, 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 feel. <laughs> welfare important, welfare important, welfare important. That's the one plus one part. As I, I'll, I'll reiterate, I recognize responsibilities on me, but not through sameness. Again, just nonsense, right? That doesn't mean anything then. I, I, I recognize a responsibility because Kant says so. I recognize a consibility, uh, 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 some obligation because it was somehow written in a constitution somewhere. Those aren't the facts that mean that that create the obligation, the logical obligation. The fact that creates the logical obligation is that you personally recognize the difference between feeling good and feeling bad. You recognize that it's better to feel good than to feel bad. You recognize that it's important to create um, mechanisms that protect you from feeling bad. Those are the facts. And those facts apply to every single body else. Every other sentient organism on this planet has that same welfare stake. And you're just pretending you can negate the existence of theirs by saying that your perception of your own welfare stake and your own welfare being important is somehow a neurosis you have. So the one neurosis you're admitting is the one part of your intellect that's actually doing something rational which is recognizing the difference between feeling good and feeling bad and you're just pretending well that's just a subjective neuroses i have there's no real difference between me being tortured and me being comfortable i just neurotically think so i have a distorted perception of reality and think somehow that feeling bad is bad when it really isn't so he's he's pretending the recognition of the difference between feeling good and feeling bad he's pretending that that's crazy okay so he can make all of the logical implications of the real existence of bad in the world okay <laughs> you can make that all go away because he's saying well when i personally experience it's completely neurotic it's complete bullshit there really is no difference go ahead torture me except don't because i am very scared of it and i'm neurotic but it's only my neuroses Okay, but it is a neurosis, so we, let's not pretend I'm not neurotic. Even though that's the most rational thing you could possibly do is recognize, oh yeah, bad feelings are bad, and <laughs> good feelings are good. Yeah, that's perfectly rational, and he's pretending it's irrational just to evade. Oh, disgusting duplicity. Let's say that, that um, and, and, and it's true, I'll, I'll grant that in all, in all the, the ways the Mendham would, would refer to, I think, um, yes, we are the same. <laughs> right. But what he's saying is the, ver the fact that there's a, a capacity to feel good or feel bad, that doesn't matter. So it's okay. We're the same, but it doesn't matter because... It doesn't matter whether everybody's tortured or not. No, there is two approaches here, and, and, and both ought to be evaluated, uh, discussed, I think. Well, it says you. Uh, there's only the right answer and the wrong answers. So there might be lots, there might be two wrong answers, but there's only one right answer. Let's suppose the free will kind of person says yeah. uh, who cares free will has nothing to do with this this is just a clearly a logical argument uh do, do, does does uh, mindness change the properties of a child the fact that it's my child does that change the properties of the child no it just doesn't fact yes there's, 
the Sufi Elks are the same. And they say, why should I, on the basis of sameness alone, be obligated in, in, a, in a moral... Well, there's no such thing as sameness alone. There's no such thing as any vocabulary word outside of all the other vocabulary words. The words are definitions of each other. They use the definitions that we know are part of the definition of the words. So it's just silly to say, oh yeah, well, sameness alone. No, well, sameness in the context of the fact that I treat myself differently. That's the rule, okay? The rule is sameness in the context where I found some excuse to treat me different than I treat them. That's the argument. Is there any reason to treat me different when they're the same? No, there isn't. sense at all, in an ethical sense at all, for this other person. That's, that's sort of question line number one. Well, good. well, again, the obligation is logical con consist consistency. You've recognized your value. You're saying there's a value difference between me being harmed and me being uh, comforted. That's a value difference. And I'm going to go to extensive lengths to preserve that value difference, to respect that value difference. And yet, things that are the same, that is, the same value difference exists, I'm, I'm going to pretend it doesn't matter. Well, it does. It matters just as much. And what I'm sort of arguing is it matters even more because they're going to um, be more efficient and they're going to be easier to protect. They're going to be easier to prevent the harm than it is for you to do it for yourself. So you can maximize the potential of your movements and your actions because you can, you can protect a lot more of them a lot easier than you can protect you. Because you're uh, high maintenance. My position, um, it's, it's, it's nice to argue from that position, which is it's a solid argument with the position for, for most circumstances. But my position would be even further and harder to deal with, wherein I say, I'm just uh, a causal robot. Yeah? yeah, they're all causal robots. Again, what, is, what does causal robot have to do with the fact that we're still logical and our brains are not work logically? So you can say it's causal, which somehow is means, and you can say the word robot, which somehow is what? That, that means robots are irrational? That robots don't know what consistency rules are? <laughs> that robots can't, or, you know, two plus two equals seven? No, robots are very good at doing math. So, and we do math very well. And this is just a math equation. So, you know, don't pretend to me you can't do the math. The math is right there in front of you. The properties are the, something that things themselves have. You're pretending that you can change their properties with your perception. I'm saying you can't do it with your perception, with your emotions, with your feelings. You cannot change their properties. All right. And the properties are dictating what the behavior should be, what the action should be. The, uh, the imperative is written by the properties the things have. The imperatives aren't written by your subjectivity. A mechanical machine. And so in what sense can it be said that this machine, because of its sameness, has, has a moral ob an ethical obligation? Uh, again, it's not that the machine has an ethical obligation. It is the thinking machine that has decided to, it, like again, just demonstrate it. Show me that you don't care Okay, whether you stick a nail in your eye or eat a cupcake, show me that it doesn't mean any difference to you. Then you can sit there and be it. Then you can say, I'm not being a hypocrite. The argument is, is as soon as you spend any effort preserving yourself from harm, the uh, mental obligation is why isn't your brain recognizing that there's all this other harm to do exactly the same with? And you can do it much more efficiently concentrating on those harms because they're so much easier to mitigate against. That logical argument cannot be defeated by this this mush that you're going to pretend you're uh, you, you're a robot and you you can't do math. Of course you can do the math. Of course you can step outside of yourself and imagine yourself as some douchebag sitting in a comfy chair talking bullshit and say, "Yeah, I can see. There's a douchebag sitting in a chair making rationalizations. That's all he's doing. He's just making excuses for why he doesn't want to play by the logical rules." In my words, because I know men doesn't particularly like the word moral. I think, I think ethical, to me, they're interchangeable. But um, 
and they're interchangeable with the word logical is my argument okay any ethics have to be logically based okay there's no point in having them if they're not logical and they have to be consistent to your logical principles the logical principle that i'm saying founds this whole mess is that the welfare of sentient creatures does matter torture is bad comfort is good it's just a fact one is a preferable state and once we establish there's a preferable state and then a non-preferable state, then that's the logical imperative. That's recognizing the broken. That's recognizing the flaw. And it's saying, well, we have way too much negative state and way too little positive state. So we got to change this balance because it's out of balance in the negative condition. It's running a deficit. The business is losing money, not making money. It's a simple recognition of failure. The failure must be fixed. guy, the girl, the person over there, all the same in all these characteristics as a machine. The, the only difference is that it's not actually me, but in, in so many characteristics, it is the same as me. It's doing the same thing. It's producing exactly the same value in the sense that it's having experiences. And those experiences can be decidedly negative and decidedly positive. They can have a decided equality to them. And that fact means there's value happening in those machines. Those machines are having value experiences that are just as valuable as yours. If my logical brain says I must protect this uh, machine from harm there's absolutely no logical way to escape the obligation to say the same thing for all the other machines that have value that have preciousness attached to them that preciousness is just as valuable it is just as useful to prevent the nail in their eye as it is to prevent the nail in my eye if i went to some effort to stop the nail from coming in my eye i put up one hand and then i put up my other hand and i put my foot up and i i do all kinds of things to prevent the nail from going in my eye the same obligation because it's the same circumstance exists to stop the nail from going in some other eye because it's going to be exactly the same tragedy the tragedy doesn't change nail in eye is the tragedy that's the thing to be stopped and it doesn't matter whether it's heading for my eye or it's heading for his eye same damn thing same damn threat what is it if i thought that that's uh Especially, what does it mean for a machine to have a moral obligation over another machine? Okay, so just more excuses. This isn't about a machine. This is about logic, and it's about consistently application, so consistent application of logic. If you have to change the logic for no reason, all of a sudden the rules change, then you, that's evidence of an inconsistency where you can clearly say there's a corruption somewhere. There's got to be error code somewhere. You have to explain the distinction if there's no reason for it. It's obligation over another machine. You see, when I comprehend myself as a causal um, mechanistic machine, then I comprehend even my experiences as just cogs. Yeah, the, the, the deep personal nature of so again, this isn't about what your subjective feelings are. This is about your ability to do some simple logic, to just step outside of your own personal interest and for one second just to say, what would I say if this was rats or if this was bats or this was wildebeest? This was any other machines and they were functioning in this way where they couldn't rationally understand what the real value was. Okay, they're recognizing the fact that the value is harm and they're pretending that it's okay if he gets eaten by the lion, but it's not okay if I get eaten by the lion. There's absolutely no reasoning to that. Same, 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 and I'm pretending this same thing is different. Well, what's the difference besides the selfish I'll pay for it personally, besides the fact that you personally will have to experience the feelings, there's absolutely no, no excuse for it. So you're just saying somehow my feelings are more important and that's the irrational statement. So you've broken the sameness rule. You can't be same and be different. So just, I'm just saying, you're clearly not recognizing that your subjective position is distorting your perception that your view is broken, you're giving things properties, you're saying those things are thems, and thems aren't as important as me, and you know you don't have any reasoning, any logic to defend that statement. Experience, which might kid the normal person, uh, confuse um, 
the normal person into thinking that they are an I, with an I is, is a thing that, that has free will. And, and <clears throat> so again, more nonsense. We know the feelings happen in brains. So I'm just saying quite obviously we're a vessel that could be called an I, an individual vessel experiencing uh, ex uh, conscious experiences. So you want to pretend consciousness is floating in some ether somewhere? It doesn't change the argument, Denny, because you're still going to have to recognize that these other consciousness have other names. They're in other bodies, uh, you know, and so when they're up in this whatever, this universal consciousness, there's still got to be some component to this nonsense. So, you know, this, this pretending now that consciousness isn't something that happens in an individual vessel uh, is just more evasion. That somehow you're protecting the world by eating your own by eating your cupcakes. I'm feeding the world by feeding myself. Bullshit. Although those other brains are starving. Liar. I, which which has a purpose of regarding itself and, and protecting itself from. So it's so a more purpose crap. Yeah. The, the whole point is is that purpose isn't rational. So again, if you're going to concede the same argument, you can't sit there and play this game that I have a personal purpose. That's just bullshit. You could understand this. I'm quite sure Hathaway could understand that if he, he if he had an actual clone, okay, like two brother clones that were identical copies and they all had exactly the same shit going on in their heads, they'd all be able to figure out that, oh yeah, we're sort of in this together, aren't we? I can't hurt you to win, okay? Like if there's a broken leg coming or a nail's coming for the eye, Damn, it really isn't going to matter, is it? Uh, you know. We're really fucked, aren't we? Bring under the schema of a mechanistic robot, it's it's not really a purpose. It's just something that happens. Okay, so more nonsense that somehow again, like we don't protect ourselves from harm because we understand harm sucks. Oh no, that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I'm a crazy robot. I'm not doing it because I logically have experienced these things. I understand the difference between feeling good and feeling bad. I understand the difference between good and bad. I understand the difference between profit and loss. I understand the difference between positive and negative. So, yeah, it's just bullshit. You know, just absolute whip, no whip. I don't, you know, yeah, yeah, I do know the difference. Cancer, no cancer. Yeah, I can tell the difference. So this is just such bullshit to pretend we're not doing it because we logically understand it to be positive and negative. That somehow we're doing it because we're dumb robots and we just obey the dumb robot rule. Bullshit. Yeah, even experience is is facade of, of what is at the deepest level. Yeah. So again, more trying to just veil it and this is some sort of big deep philosophy when it's the most obvious thing in the universe. I mean, even in the dopey, idiotic Christian Bible, it's sitting there glaring right at you, the golden rule, you know, do, do unto others as if they were you kind of argument. I mean, just clearly a recognition of we're in this together, whether you like it or not. You can pretend that this, these superficial differences between us matter, but they really don't. What's happening to the brain itself is the only part that really matters, and there's either tormented consciousnesses or comforted consciousnesses, and that's the fact. That's the only thing that's going to matter in the end. That's the only thing that did matter ever okay, was the welfare of the feeling organisms and the experiences they're having. And you can have more negative experience or you can have less negative experiences and that's the bottom line. And the only way you have less, uh, if you want to maximize the efficiency, is you've got to recognize the difference between um, priorities. And, and the fact is that uh, uh, you can spend 10 cents today and save a million dollars tomorrow. That's just the fact. You can invest in things in the present that will give the future such a huge advantage and benefit in terms of millions or billions will be spared some unnecessary harm because you made the proper nest, you did the proper nest building. It's, it's an illusion in, in, every, in every concrete factual claim that you want to make about consciousness uh, and experience well. <laughs> okay so it's just more nonsense so again it, the the simple hypocrisy argument is if you think it's an illusion then why don't you act as if it's an illusion why don't you demonstrate to me stick a nail in your fucking eye asshole okay, okay demonstrate to me that it just doesn't matter to you whether you're tormented for the rest of your life go ahead and prove it 
Uh, but this stupid, silly statement that, oh, yeah, our conscious welfare is an illusion. It doesn't really matter whether you're tortured or you're comfortable. Doesn't make any difference at all. Same difference. Doesn't matter what feelings don't matter. What you feel is irrelevant and meaningless. It doesn't have any value. It doesn't have any significance. You can torture a zillion, billion, zillion. You could make a zillion, you could, you could press a little red button that says make a zillion, quadrillion tortured and tormented organisms and it wouldn't be a mistake. I mean, what a pile of crap. Absolute fucking retarded crap. So again, you're back to it. This isn't about a sameness argument. This isn't about a properties argument. This is about nihilism. The pretense that I can just say your feelings are an illusion in your little brain and therefore it doesn't matter what you feel. What a crock of fucking goddamn shit. Demonstrated by the fact that he'll never act as if that's true in his entire life. I don't think he's ever acted as if that this wasn't true. Ever did he say, I just don't care. I'm going to shave. I'm going to cut my nose off. Who the fuck cares? Uh, I'll go ahead and stick pencils in my eye. Who cares? Fuck you, liar. Ugh. Disgusting. Just a disgusting lie. So I don't know if I'll come back to this or not, but we'll see. I, it's just, what's the point? Total evasion of reality. Well, I should be back. Uh, yeah, let's see, maybe. Uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'll play the rest of this crap in punks. Because they think he's just going to keep making the same rationalization over and over again. That somehow his understanding of the difference between bad feeling bad and feeling good is not an intellectual understanding that he's just a robot and he can't help not obeying the signals from his sense organs and that somehow okay um, like a king or something uh, it's important that his needs be met and it's not important that the peasants needs be met uh, but it's only just because he subjectively can't help it. He can't understand that their deprivation is just as real as his. <laughs> yeah, somehow he thinks they're different because his are, are controlling him and uh, theirs aren't controlling him. Now that's it, that's it. it. It has nothing to do with understanding, essentially, when obviously it has everything to do with understanding. Um, Waste is only understandable in the context of the fact that uh, it matters. Uh, something else gets harmed. Uh, the whole idea of eating animals, it's only understandable in the sense that the animals have a welfare and you're harming it. If you pretend that doesn't exist and you pretend, oh, you just eat animals because you can't help it. I mean, bullshit. So... I don't think his response will be any more than the same response always. He'll just evade. He's treating the same things differently, and he doesn't have to explain why. <laughs> because it's the explanation is he's too stupid to do any better. Essentially saying that. That it has nothing to do with understanding. It just has to do with the personal, the feelings tell him so. And he can't, he can't uh, interpret those feelings any other way to be than to be borgishly uh, obedient to them. He cannot uh, at all inhibit any impulse. Uh, again, bullshit. Um, yeah. So, uh, I'll play some of this crap, but like I said, that's all it's going to be. Alright, so three short quick points. Uh, truth versus robot. So again, just keeps using this crap that somehow um, truth doesn't have any power over robot the, somehow we have to mechanically respond and none of the mechanical response has to do with logical processes that take place in our brain and the whole point of the argument is clearly the rec the fact that we unlike animals we can recognize our sameness we can understand that the uh, wildebeest has a life and he's trying to struggle and all that kind of stuff too and he doesn't need me to uh, tear his guts out and eat them um, it's not going to be good for him. There's going to be an exchange of good for me, bad for him. And that's just a fact. And we can understand it. They can't understand it. We can act on it. They can't act on it. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, then, you know, so false dichotomy. 
truth versus robot. Bullshit. The part of us that's a robot is part of it is the logic. The logic is just as deterministic, just as narrow, just as um, the connect the dots facts are just as boardish in their obligation as the impulses. So it's just lying to say the logic uh, isn't just as precise and just as demanding. Um, <clears throat> okay, so ethical versus logical. He keeps wanting to turn it into, I'm saying, you uh, have some ethical obligation. When, no, what I'm arguing is, is you have a logical obligation. If you're going to see the necessity of protecting yourself from harm, then I'm just saying, if the other things are the same, why aren't you seeing the logical obligation to protect them from harm? It's a logical obligation. You see the necessity when you're going to be the one experiencing the unpleasant sensations and somehow you don't see the necessity when somebody else is. So again, show me where you don't care about your welfare. You don't care about your comfort. All right, It's not an, a, a, an imperative or a priority or important. Uh, show me that your mental understanding that it doesn't mean anything okay, is honest by acting it. Okay, Shove the nail in your fucking eye and show me it doesn't matter. Um, all right, and then he says experience is just a cog, it's another wheel. Well, obviously the whole point of the argument is, is experience just isn't another cog. Experience isn't the same as two plus two equals four. Experience is qualitative, qualia, whatever it has a, a, a thing to it, having a sensation is completely different. The argument is, is having a sensation is completely different than abstract imagining. I can imagine a cloud. I can imagine lots of things, blah, 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 blah. Um, I can understand lots of things and the relationships and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and they don't have any implication in terms of causing me to be tortured. So again, he's just pretending that torture doesn't mean anything, which is just horseshit because again, if it was his nuts under the hammer, he would figure out that it matters, that it would be rather wasteful to just squander that wasted experience. So just a big pile of crap. So let's just play a little of this for the fun of it. I was gonna make a separate video. In fact, I, will. I'll, 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 I've had some little insights, ontological insights, about the nature of properties, and that there are no true, accessible, intrinsic properties. <laughs> Whatever that could possibly be, there's no intrinsic or fundamental properties. Well, of course there isn't. This whole evolu the whole uh, 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 galaxies and all this stuff evolved. So. What, what do you mean by intrinsic? You mean forever? No, yeah, there are no forever qualities. Uh, the human race, the, all the sophistication of these life forms will be eventually annihilated, but not until you know there's a few more millions and billions of years of torture that you won't do anything about because you're too stone-headed selfish. Fact. To all intents and purposes, You, you can work on the assumption um, that there are no intrinsic properties. So, so again, it, it, just now again, just the, he says, I'm not a nihilist. And then he just sits there and pretends the most fundamental aspect of our existence doesn't exist. And if that isn't nihilism, what the fuck could it be called? So it's just amazing. I don't want the label of nihilist. But I will annihilate, okay, quite literally, any indication of anything happening that matters, except I'm allowed to be a hypocrite. Well, it's just so pathetic. All right, so, so we just said there's, there's no feelings in the cog. There's no good or bad in a cog. So again, he's just pretending the good and bad doesn't exist. And he's allowed to have a completely corrupt um, uh, treatment, a, a completely inconsistent treatment of same things, okay? Uh, because it doesn't matter because uh, there's no good and bad. So that's why he can treat 
same things differently because there's nothing at stake. Again, just his declaration for convenience. Well, of course, in the very field that you wish to be a hypocrite, you decide it doesn't matter. So if I decide that, well, economically, the money always goes circular and you can never kill the dollar bill, so it doesn't matter whether I steal. <laughs> you know, I could come up with any ethical equations. So I can break all of your Kantian ethics with an, a rationalization where I pretend that it doesn't matter that I am a thief. It doesn't matter that I am dishonest in how I interact with other people and steal their money. It doesn't matter whether I do any of this stuff because it can't have any ethical meaning because the circular nature of the dollar bill or some kind of ir irrational pile of crap. So again, he's just pretending there's no our perception of the goodness and the badness of our feelings is somehow arbitrary or erroneous, that it somehow isn't based on years of personal experience and facts, and that it, in the core of the universe, it somehow just doesn't matter. And again, it's only because he wishes to be a duplicitous hypocrite. There's no other reason for him to come up with this nonsense and pretend that feelings aren't a real event in the universe. So again, he's saying that all your experiences just don't matter. Doesn't matter whether I torture you or I don't torture you. And then he pretends that there's some reason for us to have any ethics at all. I mean, it is such a fucking pile of crap. Like somebody should give a shit about anything at all. And then he says, I'm not a nihilist. How is anything else important? If feelings aren't important, how can anything else be important? It would be just preposterously ludicrous to come up with some explanation for something that could matter that isn't related to the fact that a feeling organism will have a bad experience. He's saying there's no such thing as a bad experience. Therefore, how can he argue for any? change or any qualitative difference in any structure that could possibly exist and again it's just because he's decided to get the fuck out and he just doesn't give a fuck about everybody else and he thinks he's going to win that way and that's his his <clears throat> that's his uh, uh um catastrophic ignorance so i don't even know if i need to go back to the other statements because that one just sits out there so glaring all right, I evade the subject by just negating the existence of the qualitative event and just say it doesn't exist. And therefore, if there's nothing at stake feeling wise, then there's nothing at stake any wise. And yet he will still make idiotic videos talking about some efficiency in some other philosophical domain like it could matter somehow. No, I don't think it could possibly matter somehow. If, uh, if welfare stakes aren't what's at on the table, if they're not the thing we're concerned about is uh, happiness and sadness, then all, all boundaries are off. We could enslave nine zillion people and it'd be just perfectly fine. How could it possibly be a bad thing to enslave billions of people? Whip them, torture them, beat the shit out of them. How could that mean anything? You're just such a... <laughs> you don't call this duplicity? This honesty? What, you're this fucking stupid? No, you're not. Uh, this is just for your convenience. Oh, despicable. To present and buy into illusions. No, this, this is where I stand. Um, it, it's all about the contingencies that you stand upon. No, the moral obligations that I see... Insofar as I am a, pretending to be an acting individual. Um. So again, hugging the dog again, just some a, a logical disconnect. I will cook the bacon. I will hug the dog. I mean, it's just so obviously a duplicitous standard. Same doesn't get same treatment only because it's convenient to his subjective personal life. And that's all. There's no intellect involved here at all. No intellectual honesty. And again, he's already demonstrated his lack of intellectual honesty because he can't even admit obvious things like, the, you know, when things are... Uh, poorly evidenced an argument is poorly evidenced versus an argument that's well evidenced uh, so he he's, he's just a, uh, just another liar <laughs> another lying earthling oh what a surprise then but it's only insofar as I pretend to and I accept that 
in a real sense. You know? Oh, yeah, you pretend that I shouldn't pay any attention to anything you say because the one of the most obvious facts of the world, that there's a huge difference between a nail in my eye and having a cupcake, you per pretending that it doesn't exist. So the one of the most obvious facts you say don't exist, and I'm yet I'm supposed to believe anything you say has any credibility in that context, you will... You know, you will sit there and desperately evade one of the most obvious truths of our existence and then pretend, oh, no, no, I have intellectual uh, integrity. No, you don't. It really matters. Yeah? And even I have to concede that. Concede what? <laughs> what did he just concede? He didn't concede anything. And he's just going to waste my time with a, a, another overt act of here's, look, look at my dishonesty. Look at how I can't understand the word same. Look at how I just going to be a duplicitous hypocrite for my personal convenience. And it'll be just so fucking obvious. And yet I'm going to try to tell you some fucking, uh, you know, Barnum and Bailey bullshit story, okay? That this piece of crap I'm selling is nothing but is something other than just absolute crap. I'm not a nihilist. Huh. And, and the sense is, 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 is further in my case, is that I almost see it as, in the sense that I'm pretending to be a conscious individual. <laughs> so, so, what should I, I should just finish? I should, you know, what am I bothering? I'm just pretending to be a conscious individual. Who would say that? That doesn't even, even Piro's not retarded enough to say something that's stupid. Who is able to consciously reason, and and the whole notion of what reason is 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 on the map. Okay, so now he doesn't even think we do. Our brain is has been developed to see actual trees and to see actual water, to see actual slopes, to understand through experience gravity, to learn how to balance in it. That we don't sit there. That the whole device isn't uh, built. To, to do this real process of putting real facts in front of ourselves and integrating real facts with our current environment. Oh, yes, it is. That's exactly what it's designed to do. So another evasion. I can't see the logic because my brain isn't programmed to be uh, do to do logic when that's exactly what it's programmed to do. And when you say that I'm just cogs turning, what does it mean to reason in the sense of the cogs turn? Two reasons. Yeah, the cogs are facts, though, again, and so let's understand that the cogs are the facts, all right? And so once you start adding uh, information to your environment, those cogs have um, a, a discrete, real um, um, uh, 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 um, quality um, and uh, substance in the sense that we know the huge difference between somebody who sits there and pretends that... Uh, Belief without reason, faith, makes sense. That, does, that sentence doesn't make any sense, and it's obviously can uh, be seen to not make any sense. That somehow we should believe in things that aren't true, uh, because that, that helps us do things in the, in the true world. No, no, that's quite obvious, and we can see it when people are putting fake facts on the table. So again, just more bullshit. Any verb, in fact, loses its import. Yeah. when you consider it's just a cog turning. There's no real I doing something. Uh, again, there's more nonsense about some I. Of course there is an I. There's a me brain. There's an individual brains have to individually construct the truth. They have to all build the statue or build the building, however you want to describe it. It's a real thing. It takes real work. We all have to go to school. We all One of us can't just go to school and do it for all of us. Okay, one of us can't learn how to play the piano, and then we all know how to play the piano. So again, more just dodges, more distractions, because people use this concept of of um, uh, I-ness to imply they have a free will. This isn't a free will conversation. There's no dispute about the fact that we don't have a free will. This is a, a dispute about what brains do with the information they do have that's individual to them individually as eyes, as individuals. And that's just a fact that we have individual brains. And my individual brains can see your obvious duplicity it's right in front of me and i'm just going to point it out to you in an honest manner you're being overtly and obviously duplicitous okay double standard hypocrite nihilist for convenience 
you're effectively lying through your teeth to pretend you can't tell the difference between a nail in your eye and a cupcake and pretending it's just a cog. I mean, that's just crap. And if I put your actual nuts on the line, if I could create the metaphorical god, the organism that it would be capable of imposing justice on you for your trespasses against honesty, okay, I think all of a sudden you'd change your fucking story. <laughs> you know, you fucking liar. Oh, I can't figure this out. I can't figure out that same things should be treated same. And I'm allowed to cheat because I'm too stupid to see my hypocrisy. Bullshit. Oh, it's just such, such crap. Just play and they get the fuck out of here. Oh, so now the most pathetic of arguments. Somehow the human beings are special. Um, they have a dignity of some kind, and that dignity is so precious. Okay, but uh, torture? No, that doesn't matter. Dignity matters. Torture doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, just more drivel. Um, so he's saying it's uh, this is all just stuff that just happens. Um, again, uh, so does hypocrisy. So does uh, 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 logical double standards. And clearly, you're guilty of them. You just and you're just evading the facts. Okay, the the evidence is in. I've convicted you for certain. It's just so fucking obvious. Uh, same things treated differently. You're making excuses for it, except when somehow you're not going to make excuses. And so you'll point your finger at somebody else who violates these hypocrisy rules in circumstances that are far less meaningful, far less as is at stake uh, over minutia and bullshit. You will point your hypocrisy figure, finger and yet you're sitting here destroying the most valuable thing in the universe with your hypocrisy. So it's just so fucking laughable. Uh, so he says he's pretending to be an I. Why are you pretending? Why are you doing that? If it's just pretending, why? Why? Just I'm asking the question. Why? Why are you doing that? <laughs> oh, irresistible impulse or something? Um, I mean, I I'm not pretending to be a robot. I'm overtly telling you I'm a robot. Okay, <laughs> that's what I am. All right. I don't have to pretend to be an I. I don't have to pretend to be any of this crap. I'm just saying, yes, I'm an individual brain, period. All right. And I kind of know what the brain process is, right? You acquire information. You put the stuff that has value and evidence. You put it on the table. You're sitting there saying something that I've personally experienced for years. Consciousness doesn't have any value meaning. There is no kernel of anything that matters. I can be tortured and I can be not tortured. And I'm supposed to understand how those two things are the same thing. No, the things that are the same are the capacity to feel. That's the stuff that's the same. You can't get this. You don't understand the word same. You think the word same means different. Because you've turned it right the fuck upside down. Where, well, again, it's just so obvious for, for his own personal uh, ability to evade. Okay, uh, what life really is. He's running away from it like a, like a, the, the, like Piro pussy. Um, you know, uh, I can't deal with reality, so I have to make up a bunch of lies about how it works. I have to make up some notion that trees get thirsty. Um, you know, to do my pretending that it all works out somehow. I don't know how making trees thirsty makes it all work out, but somehow in Piro's head it does. Um... So yeah, he wants to live in a civilization. So he, uh, he's just pretending that <laughs> um, um, he's he's an I, and then he pretends that he wants the, that I wants to live in a civilization. But he, that's just pretending, and he knows none of that matters. Um, and it's all to preserve something called dignity. So living in a lie, living as a deluded retard, believing nonsense is somehow dignified. Sorry, it's not. You're wrong again. Oh. Responsibilities. Reciprocal responsibilities. So, so I have some reciprocal responsibility, except for the logical, obvious one, where I say, hey, I don't want to be tortured. Okay? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, yeah, except for the people raising their hands and saying, don't torture me. Oh, yeah, well, I don't have any responsibility to them. Fuck. Please, because it's just un impractical and, and, and risks and breaks the whole concept of respecting that dignity 
when when you try to draw a line saying, oh, but this person... Oh, so again, respect the dignity, do not respect the sensations. So again, just a, 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 a bizarre way to evade the ethical responsibilities, to evade the truth. So somehow he, his love for his dog is some sort of dignified relationship that that's precious, but the relationship between him and the, and the hunk of bacon, that relationship is somehow... No, that doesn't mean anything. That's not that's not worthy of of pretending for. No point in having a pageant about that or a play about that relationship because the only relationships that matter are these fake ones you made up. Right, exactly. And you say there's dignity in that overt lying to yourself. Some is mentally disabled and, and how the degree of mentally disabled or whatever that does or doesn't get this responsibility. <clears throat> so again, he'd say it's okay to torture retarded people, you know, just just because they're retarded. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, then, yeah, you should be on the table because you're fucking functionally retarded. Uh, people who lie to themselves are functionally retarded. All as I've said is, is, is reason, and I believe it's reason truth, and as such, it's been necessary for the innate compulsive side of human being. Okay, so there's no reasoned truth to this notion that you can um, rationally tell somebody that there's some evidence to believe that torture, a nail in your eye, is really just as good as having a cupcake. Really, it's just the same thing. What's the reasoning? Where, where, where said there an ounce, a, a speck of reasoning that can make that make sense? An evolution to build that into us, and that's why we have moral, ethical intuitions. Oh, just more nonsense. We don't have any moral or ethical intuitions. We are obviously we ge are genetically coded clearly. We protect our property. Okay, and that's the relationships people had with each other were property relationships. Does that pretend it's anything else? Um, and uh, uh, yes, clearly their attachments form based on what's close by. Uh, I get, I, I get to, I, I like my chair, I like my couch, I like a lot of my stuff because I've hung out with it, and you know we have a relationship. But the only reason why I don't like somebody else's couch is just because I didn't hang out with that couch. And that's the simple truth. So let's not call that any kind of rational ethics. Let's not pretend that we're innately ethical or decent. Uh, and the truth is the only way you really understand couches to understand them on a higher level. You're not going to understand anything the right way by doing it. How does it make me feel? No, that's not going to give you the right answer. Any intelligent person knows that's not the source of the right answer. So again, just defending his bigotry. Oh, I was innately made to be a bigot. I can't do anything else. I don't have a brain that acquires information and changes. No, 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 that can't happen. Yeah, it can happen. Quite simply because nature has to work on truth. Nature, we find ourselves as machines. Uh, so again, again, this, this bizarre notion, it has to work on truth. And yet before he's saying it's just erroneous cogs. That the you know, and so we know that all your impulses aren't the truth. We know that your subjective attachments are clearly bigotry. We know that we're not looking at children and seeing children. We're seeing our possessions. So it just again, just an overt denial of the obvious truths, and then saying the word truth as if he's defending truth somewhere in this absolute, fucking duplicitous lying. But try to increase our productive success uh, again our individual productive success again making one brain feel okay uh, by sacrificing all the other brains yeah no no that's not success that's called failure so again destroy the sames infect the sames allow the the sames to be um, uh, degraded and harmed to to uh, use the resources to protect me on Mount King. No, you fucking cunt. There's no logic in that. Don't pretend that's logical or that has something to do with the truth. That has, has something to do with selfish fucking uh, shitholery. You're, you're a fucking shitholer. Through 
cooperative behaviors. Uh, some more nonsense. Oh, through cooperative behaviors, we can fix minor problems that have nothing to do with anything because we're going to pretend my hypocrisy is something other than just fucking hypocrisy. And dogs exhibit lots of dogs, monkeys, lots of animals exhibit facets of ethical behavior because they too. They're pack animals. Yeah, that's right. And all animals that live in a group have to have some sort of uh, rules or obviously it wouldn't work as a group. So obviously the group rules have to exist. But some of those rules are insidious. The alpha rules. Uh, one elephant seal, you know, uh, uh, two, two, let's say, carry all the genetic code. Okay. And the other, the other seals are just born to be shark food, to die for the king. Oh, great ethics there. Trying to get by with cooperative group communal um, behaviors, but they can't step outside of the basic instinct. Uh, so again, the, the most basic, um, most precious of the values is this distinction between harm um, and uh, whatever, comfort, however you want to dis Like I said, it's only one concept, really. It's just harm, and that all there is is preventing harm as an ethic and so he he ignores the colonel to pretend that some kind of borg order is accomplishing something even if it leaves billions of the players as just shark food and, and do what is called reasoning and reasoning to my mind is just is the structural uh a, a complete a mechanistic system of... uh, again so yes yeah, so there's no point in having the conversation right because it seems quite obvious to me that what reasoning is based on is facts and that's the part where you can't understand the basic rules that when you have a big giant pile of facts and corroborating evidence and different experiments that point to the same result then that's very strong evidence that's called strong evidence and when you have no little tiny nothing facts blah 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 then that's very weak evidence. And so this really is about you know, quite quite discernible differences in the character of statements by how much evidence supports them. Now, there's absolutely a volume of evidence I've presented to you, and I could there's more volumes that other people could articulate to you to explain that you caring for your dog's brain is fucking retarded in the context of you torturing, paying people to torture animals with just as a sophisticated a capacity to be harmed. Um, and that that fucking hypocritical duplicitous nonsense that somehow you aren't a nihilist. Well, of course you are. You just annihilate what's inconvenient to you. Quite clearly. <clears throat> of building up um, correlatory structural structures in the mind in the neurons that correlate to reality uh, so again it's not about correlating to reality it's about either accurate or inaccurate <laughs> okay and because as soon as you say correlate to reality uh you know the only way to judge that is based on the volume of evidence and again that's something that you seem completely incapable of understanding the difference between weak evidence and strong evidence your non-existent evidence for the feelings don't real. They don't actually happen in the universe. You don't have to worry about them. Torture is fine. Yeah, there's little, little, <laughs> there's absolutely no reason to believe that. No evidence of it. Yeah, and the ability for those structures and those cogs to work mathematically, yeah, as cogs do, uh, and rationally, in, in checking so again, more of this crap about so this is somehow math when uh, you know the only math part of it um, is the equal sign, <laughs> you know, and the plus signal, okay. But otherwise, this doesn't have anything to do with numbers. This has to do with you know uh, brain, <laughs> okay, uh, plus brain equals two brains. I mean, you know. There's no, I get to negate the existence of this one. You know, this one gets negated by some zero factor uh, because he, I don't know him. Okay, I don't know him personally, therefore he doesn't matter. Well, that's irrational math. Those uh, correlations between the, the uh, 
the mental structures and the reality structures. That's all and, and the mathematical abstract. Yeah, and the only way to judge that is to sit there and put the crap on the table and say, how did you make that connection? How did you draw a line between those two things? How, how did you negate the same line? This, this is a two same things over here. Say so over here, you're putting all these lines onto this thing. And yet this same thing over here doesn't have any of those lines. How, how did you do that? How do you take two things with the same properties and sit there and declare them different? So again, the subject comes right back to the beginning. He's just pretending the word same doesn't have an, ob a, an obligation tied to it, a logical obligation where you explain why this thing and this thing get treated completely differently, completely different lines, connections, all the rest of it, when you've already declared there, there's an equal sign. How do you make any fucking sense out of that? Truth structures. And were the logic of the gears confirms we say we have an insight a truth uh, an idea a uh, an understanding a reasonable understanding <clears throat> look what the point is is the volume of the evidence dictates and we have things called reasonable standards based on the world of probabilities and what we can recognize to be realistic and unrealistic as any hope of of a truth being overturned just because of the volume of the evidence and those who I I would argue that's a pretty reliable standard it's the only standard we've got uh, so it doesn't really matter uh, to be able to judge truth value and it's a standard you don't give a shit about clearly where a structure is formed but the checking gears say uh, there's, 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 there's not connect there's connections here in this part of the structure not connections over here then we say to ourselves, that argument isn't fully reasoned out. Yeah? There are gaps in the logic part. And we, we've been able to classify. And again, that's the whole foundation of this argument. You have two things. You're saying, you're saying R equals W over here. And then over here, you say, um, this thing's called O, let's say. And you're saying R equals O, but R doesn't equal W. I'm just saying the the logical failure is obvious. <laughs> okay, same things get to be treated different. Why? The kinds of connections which you know and, and name them, and the kind of kinds of lacks of connections. Also, you know, it doesn't just lack a connection; it lacks a connect, a lacks a structural connection in a particular structural way, and we might label that a kind of fallacy. You know? Yeah, yeah, we might label all that crap irrational and we can label them what they are when they're belligerent failures, when you belligerently keep making the same error over and over and over and over and over and over again. Oh, well, when when that's when we can say, well, they must be just lying, right? They just keep ignoring the argument. They keep coming up with this fallacious argument to say, well, when you said R equals W, I don't accept the existence of R's or W's. Well, I sure do over here when it comes to, like, having clean sidewalks, but not over here when it comes to preventing torture. <laughs> you know, yeah, the clean sidewalks are important. You know, we have to have dignity when we're walking down the street. But fuck torture? Nah, do that all you want. Knock yourself out. A particular structural uncorrelation is called the ad hominem policy or something, you know. Um, no, my wolf is going to go for go out, don't you? Mm -hmm. oh, so, so again, he's, he's French kissing uh, that brain, okay, and he'll torture in a pen another organism of just as much value and capacity to feel, to have a uh, 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 to feel eyeish, just like the dog is doing. Uh, <laughs> and he'll, he'll torture it, kill it, and eat it. Sorry. That's called a brain fart. Yes, well, it, it does me, really, frankly. You know, just make a couple more of these videos and I will be able to resist the temptation to ever pay any attention to you ever again. Because this is just so fucking flatter stupid. It's belligerent dishonesty. <sighs> Fuck, I hate this planet. So anyway, that's, that's enough. <laughs> uh...
<laughs> you know, sometimes you miss the old days. <laughs> you say, oh, no, 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 there's nothing to miss. Uh, people are just trolls now, which sucks. But that's all these people were, too. So forget it. There's no value to be had. Just make your, your, all you can do is defend the truth and let these disgusting rapists uh, rape it. <laughs> that's all they are. Truth rapers.